Hello and welcome folks, this is gonna be uh, Yorion Iceberg in Legacy. Yeah, this is um, pretty similar to the, the Yorion lists that I've been playing in the past. And we played uh, actually a different league earlier today uh, with uh, Yorion Miracle. So if you wanna check that out, you can find that in my YouTube channel. Um, so <clears throat> this is a list <clears throat> that I'm actually uh, Kind of like taking the shell of the the lists that I have been playing in the past, except we're splashing red instead of white. So we're not playing um, Source of Plowshares and Metal Mages in the sideboard, but instead we're playing uh, Pyroblasts, uh, four copies total, and then uh, K-Command and Clothes. Of course, both of these cards are pretty experimental. Um, I do like the, the existence of both uh, Leos. So I think the Leo is actually uh, in a really good, really good spot right now. And I, in the previous league, we actually played the Narset in place of Leo, and I wasn't too impressed by Narset. Like, it was okay, um, but it wasn't, like, amazing or anything. But, um, like, that effect felt uh, quite powerful. Playing the Yorion Mirror. Uh, sure. It's a one under but with double preordain. <clears throat> one of most six. I did fix the mana, right? Yeah, mountain. Alright, sweet. <laughs> Too bad that we don't actually get value from the from the Caracas, like we don't that we cannot really count that as a white source like we used to before when we we're actually splashing white, but it's okay. The effect of Caracas is pretty important against some decks like Yuruda and even stuff like Mirror. Basic Mountain from the Yorion deck. Okay. I'm a little bit scared here actually. So I'm gonna go with a basic Island. I'm gonna try to fetch for more land to get more lands. What the hell? Is my opponent Mimi over there? Oh, that's actually not a bad draw. <clears throat> it's gonna allow us to recoup the card disadvantage from this force while at the same time helping us dig towards lands which is what we're missing here mountain mountain the opener from urine just as we all predicted exactly i am the heels just just your standard opener is this like my opponent might be memeing uh, with like that standard deck like there was some player that was playing like they would reveal Yorion and then they they were actually in mono red and then for games two and three they cyborged into Awash and they like all of their main deck cards went to the That has to be what's going on here. Winota, joiner of forces, palace jailer. That's a big deal. <clears throat> I mean, maybe OP is just playing an honest game over there. So I think we keep... So I, I think I like these cards. We have to be careful with the Winota though. This doesn't trigger Winota, so I think we're fine. Um, I think I like all of these, so we go down to 10 We Oko Plus. Mm, I think I actually like better to preordain into Ice Fang. So, 
put this on top. Pay for. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so we don't have to go to this card. So we're just gonna preordain. And we could bail for Strix. But I guess that being able to play NSSP is it's gonna be more important. What is it though? Nah, I think I think we can actually just play the Baleful Strix here. <clears throat> So Vethel Strix, we draw our Udo, and now we're probably going to be looking for a Force of Will here. It's not bad, and that is also not bad. Both of these are great. Do we want them now though? I think that we're actually going to bottom both. Like both of those are actually great, but I think we have to bottom both because it's probably gonna be important for us to to get back the mod to get that monarch. Then opponent's gonna be able to Yorion and get it back, but <clears throat> I think that's okay because at that point we're probably gonna have a an active Oko and stuff, so. So I think I'm going to next turn just Udo plus Ice Fang. And we're going to be taking it from there. <laughs> we're going to be pitching this Jace to, to the force if they play something that I. I deem counterworthy. Imp Imperial recruiter. Uh oh. So they pitch and we know now and we know that to this, so I guess they're gonna What? Destroy target artifact, anticipating true more planes, you may destroy target enchantment. Wow. All right. So they get to destroy my Strix, which kind of sucks a little bit. And I guess that's a reason for having played the Ice Fang. I mean, it's my bad because I was not playing around Dwergar Hedge Mage. Such a noob. Such a noob not playing around Dwergar Hedge. What? Hedge Mage. Such a noob. So I guess we want to shuffle first. So let's shuffle. Would be awesome to find some form of removal. <laughs> some form of removal would be great. <clears throat> I would suspect that if we manage to find Dovin Hand of Control, rental damage will be dealt to and dealt by target. Per okay, that's fine. Rabble, rabble. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to, we're gonna take their thing, of course. We're gonna take one, two, three, four, five, six. 
end step it's ice fang and we're gonna try to find um, the sweeper <laughs> Dealt by target permanent. Okay. Start here. Sweeper. So we have one blocker, we take one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm stupid, I actually <laughs> I actually locked myself out of because of this guy. Um oh, I should read better. Should definitely read better. <laughs> Should definitely read better. This actually doesn't tax place walkers, nor enchantments. Good to know. <clears throat> so if they draw another rabble effect, we lose. As is, we can just block here and we take one, two, three, four, five, six. We go another one, then we can back, we can uh, Udo a little bit, one, two, three. We're, we're still looking for the sweeper, like that's the way that we win this game. I don't think we can win without the sweeper. Resto. So they blink the rabble master and we lose. Oh, that, that also works, sure. All right. All right, interesting deck. Definitely not the kind of deck that I was expecting to see when my opponent went to Yorion, when they revealed the Yorion. We definitely want the Dead of Winter. Uh, Leo seems reasonable. We don't want Pyroblast, don't want Veil. Vale. Is that just it? Back to basics, Jubal. Bill of Summer. Yeah, right? Are there any cards that we don't like? Nope, this is it. I guess Force is pretty bad. It's probably better than the alternatives. I'm just gonna. Opponent definitely in a brewski over there. Definitely on a good old brewski. I wonder if we should have access to like power blasts and stuff. Because it answers the Dovin and it also answers the Yorion. Is Yurian good enough to play a second copy in the main? No, I don't think so, Brady. It's only good because like we're not playing this deck to, to get value from Yurian, right? It's just like we are only slightly building our deck that way, but it's not like the centerpiece of what we're doing. This sounds great, by the way. As long as we hit our land drops, this hand's gonna be pretty good. 
have access to the key. We can force if they attempt to like turn one moon us or something. Which seems unlikely, honestly. They moon got that five. The bad part is I, I have no idea what to expect from my opponent's deck. Like they're playing Yorion and they're not playing stuff like Ashley. Seems like almost free, but I guess that it isn't for them. For whatever for whatever reason. All right, I think we're just going to astrolabe here. We're kind of opening ourselves up to a turn one moon. I think it's okay. What is this, Chalice? Chalice is fine. Definitely you don't see Yorion in a, in a prison shell every day. Certainly an interesting concept. This is decent Dovin. Uh... Do we force this? I guess we can just snap plus get it back. Also, my opponent went down to one land. Astrolabe. Easy. Walking Ballista is fine. Awesome. So we can Udo into Preordain. So bottom this, top the Leo. So next turn we can Leo and we can protect it with both force and... <clears throat> yeah, uh, I, I think that this Leo is just going to win the game here. Even if they want a minus on here, they we draw a card. <laughs> and we protected with Caracas from like a Pyroblast or whatever. I think I like our spot. Pog.
I think we're done here. If opponent attacks, we could just trade. I actually don't want to get rid of my green sources, so I'm just going to do this. My opponent doesn't concede. Okay. There we go. No Ren and Six in this version. Uh, <laughs> Ren and Six is banned. Brady bothered. <laughs> Otherwise, yes, we will. We would definitely be playing some Ren and Six. And unfortunately, Ren is banned in this format. I guess I should say, but fortunately, Ren is banned in this format. So you used to be playing modern? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh boy. I mean, this hand is pretty solid, but I would certainly love to have access to... Unfortunately, yeah, you're right, you're right, Rodrigo. Very, very fortunately, Ren is banned. All right, looking for lands here, of course. Uh, these are very good, but I think we need to hit our land drops. Unfortunately, that one we do have to force. Now, of course, it sucks that I forced it, but... When I did have to make the decision, it was correct to force. God damn it! Alright. Brainstorming response. So I guess we can trophy it. So, yeah, we definitely trophy it. So this on top and this on top. I kind of want to draw these lands. Coding. Um, so there's a force on top, which I don't want to draw. On the growth here. Abrupt decay. Ugh. So I'm going to wait until they play the Liquid Medical Link first. Train a sphere. So, black mana here, 
Yeah. So that gives them the land, so if they want, they can play something else now, but we have Abrupt Decay, and we also have KQ Man, so we can potentially 2 for 1 them, which is nice. Decremental Coding Resolves. <laughs> play land, pass the turn. Still don't know what we want to decay or what we don't want to decay. For example, if they Karn, if they play another Karn, what should we do? So we probably destroy this and we okay, command them. Or I guess we just decay this in response if they can't me. Pog. So I guess we K command, we make them discard. And destroy target artifact. Black, red, one. So they can actually cast the rebel. Right. So we have decay plus force here. Look at kind of doing stuff over there. Each creature you control this damage equal to its power to each opponent. Okay. Well, that one we have to force. We can trophy this guy. That's probably the best option. Because without this guy in play, they can't cast their stuff. Assassin's Trophy, black, green. I guess the Yari Chal is deck, so they probably should not have access to Pyroblasts and stuff like that. What is this? Palace Jailer. It's pretty good. Um, so here do we Udo or do we Yorion? I think we Yorion. It's effectively the same. Blue card, sweet. So now we can actually force their Yorion, meaning that we can potentially attack and get what's rightfully ours. I 
Della Libera86, thank you for the follow. What you got, OP? Okay, so they are gonna cast their Yorion. Force, Speech in Force. Please be good. Please be good to go. Please be good to go. Come on, you're a child today. You can't have Pyro last. Be a reasonable opponent. Be reasonable. We are the Queen Marchesa Bruce, I was promised. That was a long, long time ago, my friend. <laughs> that was a hell of a long time ago. So we're gonna get our, our Snappy back. What should we do? Should we just like brainstorm or I guess we can just preordain. Because I think that the cave might just be cool. We could also K command and make them discard, but we like if they have I guess that if they have a resto, we kind of lose anyway. So we cannot beat Restoration Angel. I, I guess that we can neither beat another Palace Jailer here. My opponent says they can't beat five Force of Wills. One, two, three, four. Just four. I remember actually 4 1 on stream with Queen Marchesa, and I think a 5 0 with it once as well. I honestly don't remember. Four mana, what are we gonna do here? Assuming the campaign mechanic is going to be nerfed, think Yorion will still be viable? Probably not. Choose the most any number of targets, tap each creature that damage this way, players that damage can't cast no creature spell this turn. Okay. I didn't even know that was a card, that's cool. Uh, so we're just going to get back Udo now. One, two, three, four, and five. Aurelius Fury. Wild. Saluka. They have Nahiri, so I have to assume that they actually have access to to an Ember Cool in their deck. Yeah. Nothing like saying you can't beat something right before you beat it. Yeah, that's such that's such a silly thing. Never never complain to your opponent that you can't beat what they're doing when you when the game is still not over. It's just it's just BM. Looks like we both got lucky. Uh, I mean I don't know, man. But it's like there's such little there's such little equity in like complaining about being unlucky or whatever to your opponent. Like now they can they can cast. Yeah, exactly. It's just like like this is just 
you just come out as an asshole when you do this kind of thing, you know? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe my opponent is is nice. I I don't know, but like you, it, it just really can't. It just really comes off the the wrong way, you know. Like they they are they are just like throwing it in, on my face, and then they are the ones winning the game. It's just like, why did you say anything in the first place? Exactly. It's like, oh, I'm I'm unsure that whether I'm winning or not. Cool, you know. It's like you you have a fucking Emberquill in play. <laughs> um. Are you sure you're unsure about this? I don't know. It, it just rubs me the wrong way, you know? Okay, so... We can dead of winter, but if we dead of winter, then yeah, I guess we just have to draw into Caracas. So if Caracas is our only out, I guess that we should cycle Wilt before we do that. And that means that I probably should not Dead of Winter either. So we have not played made, made a land drop just yet. Now we just have to brainstorm into into Caracas. I guess that one counts. Yeah, that one counts. Okay, so we're gonna put this on top. We're 24. Yeah, so we're gonna put this on top and this on top. Play land. I think I wanna draw the clothes and stuff. This is just a temporary measure over here. Oh, I guess that actually kills the Emrakul, so they're gonna get it back. If they minus the Luka. But if, if they get it back, they can't attack. Ugh. They can rabble. Yeah, they can rabble. Do they have anything else in exile? So this one was an exile by Luca. I think just the rabble is the one that was exiled by Luca. So I don't think Clothis is going to cut it, so we're probably going to shuffle. Elk Rakul, yeah. I just broke the heck are you good? Uh, what is this? That's a lot of mana. Is this a walking ballista? <laughs> 
So they're gonna minus on one of their dudes, I guess. Four. It's a lot of mana. Seven, eight, nine. Six, seven, eight, nine. So they have nine mana. Well, they have like Aurelia again. Sure. So now I'm probably gonna minus on the Pia. Oh wait, what? Oh my God, they got greedy. Opponent, no. <laughs> oh wow, that's brutal. All right, so do we want? Do we want our guy now? One, two, three, four, five. Do we want Clothis? Because we can Udo into Clothis, right? The problem is that Dead of Winter is going to kill our Udo. Because um, I think Clothis is a clock. Yeah, but I, I'm not going to be able to cast Clothis here because I probably want to cast Udo. I guess I can do one, two, three, one, two, three. I, uh, I guess I can draw land. Because I kind of want to sweep here. This is minus two though. One, two, three, one, two, three. So we can claw this plus sweep. No, there is no land on top. So I think I'm just going to do this here. End step, I'm gonna Ice Fang. And next turn, I'm gonna sweep. I guess they might draw a Winona, Winota, whatever. So they can cast Recruiter, Fairy Macabre. They can cast, but they cannot actually use the ability from Fairy Macabre. So that means that the Clothis should be good. What a close game. What a close game. There's the Imperial Recruiter. So they have to go get Fairy Macabre here, right? So that they can counter my Clothis activation. Kiki Jiki. They can't cast Kiki though.
Oh, this is huge. Oh, I tapped them out. This is huge. All right, so they did activate the, the Luca already, so I think we win now. Wait, what? Oh, where did, where, where did my snake go before? What a wild game! What a crazy game! What a crazy game! Wow, if my opponent hadn't punted, we would have totally lost. You punted that away <laughs> when you minus on the thopter. <laughs> Could have minus on uh, Pia. Wow. Nothing like blaming things on luck, when in reality, you actually were the one that lost this game. To do what? I've had 15 power, bro. But I don't know. If my opponent wants to tilt off, I'm just gonna let them. I don't know. Again, I was I was not the one that complained. They were the ones that complained. I don't know. I just built the deck and you drew really well. Yeah. Same for you. <laughs> My opponent complains that I do really well, but so did they, so like, they say eh, I don't know. Clearly our deck is amazing. I don't know. I feel like just, just saying, oh, your, your opponent got really lucky is, it just ignores so many things. We actually talked about this yesterday in the MSL. There's very, there's such little value in saying, oh, you got really lucky. I lost, the, I lost this game because you got really lucky or whatever. Oh, I just noticed that we're playing against Gerula. This is not a hand that I should have kept against Gerula. Whoops. I don't know. I feel like there's always something that you can learn. Or if not always, the vast majority of the time, there's something that you can learn from a, from a match of magic. And maybe you made some mistakes along the way. But if you just blame it on luck, there's you don't give yourself the chance to learn from those mistakes. Because you're just uh, basically saying that what I did didn't matter and it was all my, all my bad luck and boohoo. When in reality, maybe there actually was something that you could have done. So I suspect that we're just gonna get, we're just gonna get caught here. Do we, I think we want to draw one card deeper? Towards the force, not, not certain. Whether force is gonna be good enough if they have cavern of souls, obviously, but all right. My opponent is gonna die here. However, if I don't die this turn, we can at least K command the LED. Alright, so now we just commence the 
the finger crossing phase of the game. I suspect that the chances of them whiffing are actually pretty low. Never mind. I stand corrected. I think I'm gonna Udo here and next turn we can Udo into Ice Fang if we draw a land. Force of Negation and Clothis. I think Clothis is going to be unnecessary. So I'm just going to, and the Force at this point doesn't do anything. So I'm just going to try to draw a little bit deeper, to dig a little bit deeper towards the land. What do we got here? Three mana for what? Fire Action Metamorph. <laughs> Literally the only one that they can cast? Oh my god. Wow. All right, here we go again. Of course, nothing we would have done. Like, they just needed to draw exactly for action Metamorph. It was literally the only card they can cast. Literally the only card that they can cast, so... That needed to be their exact top deck. So we need them to whiff twice. Yes, they did whiff there. So we only get attacked for six this turn. Ugh, they took my Ice Fang. Well, um, one, two, three, four, oh, we're one short. Oh, crap. There's a of Winter in my graveyard and I have a Snapcaster Mage, but I don't have enough Snow Permanence. No, because we're, we're one minute short. Wow, that's insane. So we're going to be taking 12 this coming turn? <laughs> yeah, we survive. And then we take 12... Then we cast Udo. Oh man, we're one mana short. Sucks so much. Okay, we go down to two. Sanctuary would be gas right now. Yeah, it would have been. Ha! <laughs> Bog. All right, so Udo. Blue, green, green, blue.
Pyroblast confirmed busted. Heard it here first. Yes, baby! Yes! Common of Souls, thank you very much. Oh my god. How the hell did that even happen? <laughs> Perfect cam and I was worried. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe that just happened, chat. That was amazing. I guess we do care about Decay because of Chalice. Do we care about... Sur I guess we do care about Surgical. Oko's good, Uro's good, K commands. Yeah. K command is there. Uh, we probably want back to basics, I guess. Surgical actually doesn't quite work against Kiruda that, that well. Because, like, what just happened? How do deck tech works? Like, when do you do them? Uh, usually they do them in between leagues, uh, 30. I think we go with this. It's possible that Surgi Ghost should, should simply just not be in my deck. Nope. If they have a second LED, they... <laughs> I was gonna say, if they have a second LED, they have a second LED, whatever. Or oh, they have nothing else. Alright, maybe we have a shot here. Having to pitch Udo there is pretty brutal. We don't have a blue source. Also, so like a soul land gets us <laughs> easy. All right, here we go. Uh, so should a surgical spark double in response? How do you feel about this, folks? Should a surgical spark double in response? It does make it just a tad less likely for them to to get there. Also allows us to check out how they severed it. So the chalices are still there. Phantasmal images, LEDs, thought knots. All right. The thing is that we can't really beat this thing, right? That is the main problem. Like, we actually cannot beat the, the Giruda. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the problem. Like, we actually cannot... Like, we don't have an endgame, right? I guess, let's say that they whiff Sire of Insanity. Yeah, okay, so we can probably pack it in. <laughs> that deck is so stupid. It's like Belcher, but you don't you don't win. You don't beat it with force. I just don't think Surgical is very good. I think I'm just gonna cut the Surgicals. I don't think they do anything. And I guess Wilt is just a better abrupt decay. Because we can cycle it if we need to. Because we're not decaying anything. Alright, let's see what we find here. Reveal a good old Yorion. I mean, we do have a force, I guess. DK gets LED, yeah, and so does so does Wilt, except if our opponent does not have a, an LED, we can just cycle it. They always have the force, don't they? So we probably have to force the fast mana, which really sucks. Defense grid. Start here. Oko. Okay, that's fine. So now we can Oko the defense grid. Swank playing D. There's the Thought Node, which we cannot counter. Too many F3s are even good for Standard anymore. <laughs> those, those were the times. Opponents sees the force and they're like, yeah, you you're good. You can have it. What is their hand? I want to know what their hand is. Metamorph. So this is another Thought Knot. So that's a 4-4 in play. I think I just forced this, right? 
So we force this, that means one less 4-4 four four that we need to worry about. Yeah, I think so. Um, I guess that I'm going to snake first. 1, 2, 3, 4... Whoops, no, I misclicked there. Whoops. Forgot that I had the, the F6 going on. Okay, that's interesting. Just to have a 1-1 one, one instead. Force of negation. Okay, okay. Two, three, four. Make a food. Arkantos Awaken, thank you for the follow. All right. So the program named Demon here, they didn't float mana. Okay. No, come on. The mid okay. The, the misclick is is strong. The misclick is strong. Um, so I think I'm going to use this turn to Yorion. We draw one, two, three, four, five. Because I think the three, three is going to be more valuable than just a discard, you know? I could also just hold. No, but it's, we, if we hold, it's only. I think that's a good trade for us because like we were going to go to this card anyway. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Here and there. Sure. These are not great cards, I don't think. We drew four cards and we still only have one force going for us, which is hilarious. So we're looking for Udo here. Maybe from that kind of stuff, you know? So with the K here, we swing all. We, they take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we get to kill the Thought Knot. So we present a two-turn clock.
I think I want to get this game over with, basically. So this allows me to present it to turn clock. Black, one, red. Return target creature. I guess, it's, is it better? Yeah, I think it's better to return a creature. Creature to damage. All right, here we go. Nothing we can draw, nothing we can really do. That should be good enough for us to win. Get wrecked, Giruda. Get wrecked. They whiff a lot in that match, honestly. They whiffed a lot. Which companion do you think has the strongest shot of surviving a minus one card in hand, the Rata, or will it just kill them? That's a good question. So you mean like, if you have a companion, you start with what card left in your in your hand? Because uh, I think Lurus would still be pretty good. Like Index built to abuse Lurus, it, it, it would still be pretty good. Uh, maybe Yorion doesn't survive. I mean, in Legacy, it wouldn't, for sure. Uh, in Modern, it might. No Lander, gotta ship it. Yes, Lander, gonna keep it. What to bottom though? I think I'm gonna bottom the mountain. A little bit of the greedy side, but we still need to find the blue source. This mana base? What do you mean? It's perfect. Look at this. Perfect mana. What are you even talking about? What are we up against? Snow covered island. Blue source. That's like the opposite of a blue source. That's awesome. Land. Well, this is something I can do. Who was the one that jinxed me and said that this mana base sucked? Show yourself.
So the best case scenario is probably the fact that we might be paired against... Um, right now, this might be show and tell. And if this is show and tell, opponent show and tells, and we play Leopold, and then we can bounce there. So they can increase their brand. And then they can ba um, we can bounce their Emrakul, which is hilarious. It is not show and tell. It feels bad, man. We were definitely not ready to to answer a mentor. Uh, we might get peers here. Yeah, there's the peers. Feels bad, man. I think like we had to we had to slam it there. Not another mentor, Chase. Nope. Land. Okay, I think we just have to slam. They might just straight up answer this Leo and that would be horrible for us. Hopefully they don't. I mean, I guess worst case scenario, they just plow this and then we draw a card. But like now we just blanked all of their cantrips and stuff. So I clearly have nothing here. So I think I'm just gonna tap out. Uh, we might get got by a Terminus, but they didn't set it up with the Brainstorm when they could at the last turn. And we can find a land drop, which is exactly what happened, which is great. Astrolabe is good to go. Oh, Supreme Verdict, Council's Judgment. All right. Land. Not a good one. Land would have allowed me to Yorion and draw two, which would have been great. Force is Justin Castle, so. Not too great, not too great. Well, that, that one is actually pretty great. Did they have draw a force? No, they didn't. Okay, cool. Okay, so they don't have a force because that was definitely something worth forcing there. Maybe they have a Snapcaster in hand, so it's better for them to snap snap flashback console's judgment. Alright, so we get to on top. Sweet. Alright, awesome. Pay four, pay four. Source to publishers.
I'm tapping out of force here, but I think we're just gonna pass here. I don't know why I fetched there, I shouldn't have fetched. So next turn we can Yorion and we can hold up Caracas. Oh, that's pretty good. All right. But oh, these are great. So we Udo draw into this, play two lands. So we have seven mana. So we can Udo into Jace with force backup. Okay, this on top, play this. We could also Udo into Udo. That probably sounds a little bit worse. So I think I have to try to hit my opponent while they are down for Snapcaster, Pitching Brainstorm. Yep. All right, sick. And I'm just gonna brainstorm here. Pog. So I guess they, they should have like mentor into a bunch of cantrips. So now they can't have that. The fairy time rubbler. Okay. <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> that escalated quickly over there. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. So I think that when there's an R set in play, library autom automatically just doesn't do anything. All right, so I'm just gonna start plusing, I guess. Blue, blue, green, green, Udo. So land on top. So I'm gonna bottom that land. And then, yeah, I'm just gonna slam this cloth. This it definitely puts a clock on them. <clears throat> they might be able to snap plow the Uro or something, but wow, that Narset was huge. The fairy is not such big of a deal, but the Narset is definitely is definitely brutal there. Some very good strings of top decks for, for my opponent. So they're essentially just like a snow, like Jeskai snow control. Main deck mentors is interesting for sure. Source to plowshares, all right.
They have to have Mystic Sanctuary, right? Well, I guess we're going to find out really soon. They don't. They can instant speed Constant Judgment, though, because of the Teferi. So if they have Snapcaster, I would imagine that... Yeah, there it is. So they're going to exile the Clothes now. And then they're going to STP the Euro. Wow, brutal. Such a great strings of string of uh, situations for them. <laughs> Just keep drawing cantrips. Brutal. Um, so there goes the plow. I mean, at least the good thing is that they don't really have. Alright, we're going to keep this on top. They don't really have... a card advantage engine. At least not yet. Mm-hmm. And we have Caracas, so we can like replay this URL as many times as we need. As we need. When you first played JJ, I was thinking you should have started the Fate Seal on opponents. I don't think that you want a Fate Seal. Like it doesn't really get you anywhere. Like making sure that we can actually. Uh, filter our own draws when we actually cannot uh, when we cannot do that kind of thing force of negation I guess we don't want to put that on the bottom no so we're gonna do discuss Yorion We can draw into that force. Oh, the force doesn't do anything. There's the fairy you play. What am I doing here? That's bad. Mentor. Oh, wow. So we can force this? I don't think we should force this. So they have right now to get rid of the Orion. They don't. Easy. Nice. Whoo! That was a. Uh, that was a game. All right. Veils. Yes. Rebs. Yes. Thank you, Leo. Yes. One or Jaces. We can probably shave the forces. Clothis sounds reasonable. Cake Man sounds good. The Strix sound good. Leo sounds great. Probably can. Cut the Dead of Winters. We have the case and trophy. How do we answer Resolve Mentor? Decay, that's it. I guess Oko is an answer to Mentor. No, oh, I have 81. Whoops. No. Uh, 
We could cut the clothes. Seems a little bit slow. But yeah, you saw you saw the value of uh, Yorion in that game, right? If we hadn't had access to just like the random four five flyer and like the combo that we actually had uh, with the Caracas, we would have won that game pretty easily, right? So for people when they they ask me whether Yorion is worth it, well, cer certainly a great example right there. We'd love to have access to like a force or something so that we actually have a way to uh, to protect ourselves from an R set next turn. That would be great. Spellpier, Pyroblast, any of those cards would, would help a lot here. So I'm gonna represent Pyroblast, I think. So hopefully my opponent doesn't go for a for an R set. Spellpiers, Bale. I think trading cards there is fine. So now even if they have Narset, they can slam the Narset, but we can uh, oh, go and attack it. So it's not the end of the world. I don't think I want to slam the library into a potential Narset. But I can probably play the Uro here. If he get count if it gets countered, it doesn't matter. Like good, that's a counter spell that doesn't counter my Yoko, which is the one that really matters. And it ramps me and it digs me towards that. Exactly. Uh do I want to preordain now? I think so. I kind of want to get rid of these cards while I don't have to worry about Narset. If OP wants to counter this, whatever. Ice Fang Quattle and a land. Can we want both of these? We might be using this to pitch to force though. Unsure. I guess depending on, depending on what they play. But if they play a mentor, I think I do attempt to counter it because I'd rather my opponent tapped out or they fight uh, while the mentor is on the stack and not while the mentor is in play. And then if it is a mentor, we can like slam the Yoko and potentially. There is the mentor. So attempt to counter this. I'm gonna Pyroblast or not. All right, so now we're going to be able to library plus Oko. I guess we can just library plus Leo. Seems better. Leo Bold. 
Nice. Now we get another blue source. We're going to play this library. My opponent doesn't even have Council's Judgment mana. If they do answer the Leo or like they play something like a Narset, we can very easily clock it with this Oko. And with this Leobold. So I think we're looking pretty great here. Not like insanely great. But I don't mind the current situation we find ourselves in. Also, this KK man is gonna be gross getting back Leo. Wear tear my library. That's fine. Preordain. <clears throat> Again, and all of this while we still we still have Yori on Lumin over there. Uh, there might have been an argument there for using Colgan's command and just immediately recasting the Leovold. Another argument for Udo plus Oko. But I think I want to try to use this K command this turn. Especially if they have like a mentor or something. The only problem is if they play a mentor and they hold up a red mana. I think that I just pass. Which sucks a little bit. What do we got here? We're playing this game pretty aggressively, though. Chase. Probably have to minus. They can't plus. Just minus bouncing the astrolabe seems so bad for them. Okay, so we're just gonna get back Leo and we're gonna deal two to the Jace. Um, graveyard to your hand, two damage. Do I want to Udo? Chase down. So I can Udo plus Leo, but we are kind of overextending a little bit into... Oh yeah, Scott, yeah, this is what's up. You know, you know this is what's up. I think I'm just gonna uh, cast the Udo here. But I'm not gonna cast the Leo Vault. No, we have to cast the Leobold. Black, blue, green. Like, even if they somehow left a Wrath effect in their deck in post cyborg, then they just Wrath and I still have a, an Oko. Ice Fang and Yorion, so I can Ice Fang into Yorion, draw two. And we can still get back the Euro, because we're going to have enough fodder. So, even the worst case scenario is still not that bad for us. Yep. Clearly played perfectly. And it was great. This 
These leaves are long, man. These leaves are long. The matches are great, though. The matches are truly great. I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick. I will be right back. It's gonna be like 30 seconds. this style of deck so much. It's so much fun to play. I feel like we could have won every single match that we played today. Maybe not the first one. Like our opponent was a lot better prepared. It was a lot better prepared for our, for the mirror than we were, especially game one. But like the only match that we lost that wasn't the first one, we would have won. If we hadn't timed out. Ship it. Oof. Another Yorion mirror. All I wanna do is hit land drops. Yes. A wrap decay with the only other land being a volcanic island. Exactly. Excuse me. Okay. Oh, this might be DNT actually. That's actually a little bit too much pressure. Yeah, I heard that actually this was this started to be a thing. Okay. So we do have access to abrupt decay. We're definitely uh, trying to draw towards um dead of winter. It's fine. We already have our next land drop lined up. Remorseful Cleric. Now that's a card I did not see coming. It's gonna be pretty freaking good right here. They're gonna have to sack it next turn. So fortunately, we're only going to be taking two from it. Recruiter. So this is probably going to be a Palace Jailer. I would imagine. I saw Leo and I had to stop what I was doing. Yeah, that sounds about right. Leo. Leo is a fine folk. Great friend. Great friend of the stream. Huh, interesting. Okay. <clears throat> All right, just 
gonna cast our Yorion. Draw our card. It's not a good one. Not a good one at all. We can start drawing one card a turn. As long as our opponent doesn't uh, answer our Yorion. Would imagine we're gonna see a source, yeah, sort of fire nice. C -c -c combo Nothing like spending six mana to have a vigilant Yorion that draws you a card of return. I mean it is card advantage. I would love to be drawn a little bit better though. <laughs> it's not beats by Yorion, yeah for real, right? I would love to be drawing it just a little bit better, you know? Just a tad better. Flicker Wispo. So they're probably gonna, yeah, blink their recruiter. Palace Jailer? More Wisps. I mean, the idea of what I'm doing here is, of course, I'm trying to desperately, desperately dig towards... Oh, that's not bad. The Sweeper, right? Well, that one can go away. So I probably have to hold the uh, force this turn, unfortunately. We still have Ice Fang that we can use. All right, Giver means that we're not gonna be facing a Palace Jailer here. If they attack, we can Ice Fang. Oh, no, 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 no. We wanted to shuffle in response. Land. Oh, cool. All right. I mean, we are going to be clocking here. So that this there's that. Four. Get mom there. One, two, three. Yeah, this is gonna be pretty good for them. So they're gonna get to answer the Yoko. We do have them on a two turn clock though. It's possible that just drawing cards is better though. Unclear. So if they want to answer the Yoko, they actually have to attack with everything at the Yoko. All right, they're not attacking with everything. Is Yorion gonna go the distance here? So 
starting to look like Yorion might be able to go the distance. Vile resolves. Cardex work for the Zephyr account to complete. Yeah, it's it's been great. Um, so I think I have to plus on the sword, so my opponent can't draw a card. Seventy nine. Sorry, I missed your seventy nine A U one ninety six. Thank you for the follow. So I think we're just gonna do this here. Path to exile. We need to save this. We need to save the force for the palace jailer. I'll turn that we can hard cast the force here. And then just use the force. If we plus, that we take one, two, three, four. Okay, we're gonna create a food. I think I might have messed this game up. So if they want to draw a card, they actually have to attack me, which means the Oko survives one more turn. Or they can attack everything at Oko, which means that they don't draw a card. Okay, so Oko lives another day. At this point, do I just let the Palace Jailer resolve? Recruit of the Guard. I think there's definitely an argument for letting the Palace Jailer resolve at this point. Phyrexian Revoker. Come on, come on. See if we can draw something actually good here. We can gain three life thanks to this food, which is good for sure. Is it bad I miss Oko? I never play with it and I hated playing against it, but Titan I miss it. Stockholm Syndrome? It could be, honestly. Because, yes, it, it definitely is bad that you miss Oko. Definitely it is bad that you miss Oko. All right, so 
Revoker is going... They can't name food because it's not a card, so... I'm just gonna hard cast here. For two mana, I guess they could have the flyer guy. They don't have lethal. Right? We just go down to one. Oh no, they do have lethal. Oh, whoops. I definitely miscounted there. I thought that they couldn't attack with the with the dude for whatever reason. Huh. Well, that sucks. All right. We want this. We want this. Bye bye Veil of Summer. Bye bye Pearl Blast. Forces seem awful. Okay. Let's try again. I totally thought that I was going to one. I, I guess I just I just miscounted there. Unfortunate. Sure. Will that thing? No messing around. It's my island. There's my island. Pablo Sky zero eight twelve. Thank you for the follow. It's actually quite interesting that like. Oh wow! Whoops! Is this a concession? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I guess that we learned that Caracas is legendary there. Like the the difference when when uh, DNT has turn one vial versus when they don't, it's so huge that it really surprises me that Yorion like playing eighty cards and actually seeing your vial on turn one a lot less consistently is actually a good thing for the deck. Wow, I guess my my opponent's just a professional. Professional vial drawer. Gita. No one drop, please. They do have a one drop. Just don't have, don't be giver. Mom is fine. All right, definitely looking for the sweeper from now on.
What's the play here? They just play the Oko on plus on the GTA probably. Cause I want my opponent to to overextend a little bit more into this Dead of Winter. Just gonna plus on the GTA. Totally didn't know that interaction. That's sick. That is straight up amazing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, this is gonna be a lot more straightforward. I can just um, elk the vial. And now we can dead of winter. Source here. Black one green dead of winter. Preordain. Nice, nice. Uh, so I guess I want both of these. Top, top. And it should be smooth sailing from here. That Karaka as well as my GTA interaction seems pretty amazing. <clears throat> this list has been pretty legit. Um, the only thing that I that I wonder is whether I should be playing some number of fatal pushes because like we're not playing we're not playing um source of pressure so on the other hand the main deck dead of winters have been incredible just like dead of winter period has been really really good let's see if we can add uh, like a couple of fatal pushes Maybe the fourth decay. I'm just gonna have a couple of pushes. Maybe like two fatal pushes. I really am not sure how we want to split. Also, it's possible that we don't want the two Jaces. Jaces has been the Jace has been definitely the most medium out of all the cards in the deck. Uh, Bronn is going first. Sand looks great. Turn one Swampo. Pretty good. Hitting our land drops, making sure our mana works perfectly. So now we're gonna be able to strix on two, trophy on three. DNT again. Okay, what is this? Chalice for one? Don't care. Okay. 
Okay. So next turn we can Oko the Chalice if we want. Cavernous Souls. On Soldier. Ooh, Soldier Stompy. Hell yeah. Sold your stompy, baby. Uh, I guess maybe that was a mistake because Palace Jailer could be brutal right now. Yep. 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 That was a mistake. Certainly a mistake. So now they're gonna get to clear the Oko and I'm gonna be super far behind now. Yeah, that was a pretty bad mistake. Yeah, that was that was pretty bad. Really bad play on my part. Solid. So we're gonna get to slow down the clock a little bit here. We're gonna get to kill the Thalia. Stealing, stealing this Monarch is going to be pretty tough. Stealing this Monarch is going to be pretty tough. Not, not playing around that Palace Jailer is going to cost me. Suppression Field. Not another Thalia, please. Ugh. Gross. Hmm. How are we sequencing this? So I guess we just need the sweeper, right? Again, we're just drawing towards the sweeper. So let's Udo. Gain some life. Abundant growth here. Take six, seven, eight this turn. Yeah, that that palace jailer was the story of this game. So if I Oko and I plus on my Astrolabe and I attack, that's going to be 5 mana total because of Suppression Field. But that is going to force my opponent. I think that's the line. At least it puts me... Like, it puts me on the battlefield, and it potentially gains me a little bit of life. Because, well, I guess they have lethal, right? So 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, they just have lethal. Whoops, I made another mistake there. 
Yeah, I forgot that the Bill for Strix comes into play tapped. Damn it. Well, mul multiple mistakes that game. Multiple mistakes, and I was punished for them. That's fine. That's fine. Let's try to. Let's try to strengthen things up a little bit for game number two. Fire of Last Veil can go. That was very poorly played on my part. Ugh, that was bad. That was really, really bad. Should I have back to basics because of cavern? Probably better than a force. That was very poorly played. Apologize for that. Apologize for that game. That didn't count. That doesn't count. Think. Just look at the record up there, okay? Just look at the record up there. Don't don't think about that game that just happened. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. We're fine. Sure, this hand seems pretty good. All right, this, this hand's gonna be a lot better than the previous ones. So I'm gonna lay one one off a basic forest. Definitely wanna get the fetches out of my way because of Thalia and Suppression Field. Caracas could potentially be good. See what this is over here. Exiling Thalia. Into another Thalia, okay. So I think we just Caracas bounce and play Abundant Growth. Bounce there, Abundant Growth my land. Yeah, so they can't really Thalia again. Uh, suppression field resolves. So now Oko is going to be a lot worse. But... Um, I guess we can still library here. And now we drew Snapcaster so we can decay this and then we can decay something else. Also, they don't have another land drop. Yep. Oh, that's why. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> is this one good, chat? Is this one good? I can't tell. So, black, red, one, two, destroy target artifact, two damage to any target, lol. Top, pay four for this one. So, black, green, decay, fetch, blue, one, two, three, water, play a land, pass the turn. My point is a fighter. Mm. 
My opponent is a fighter. Put this on top. Put this on top. Put this on top. Play land. Blue. Black. I want to just do this. <clears throat> One has conceded. All right. For the five O, -oh. for the five and O. -oh. Any changes? I think this is good. I'm not a fan of the Jaces, but I think it's better than everything else in our sideboard, so. Just gonna leave them where they are. Soldier Stompy is the end boss. You gotta love the legacy format. You gotta love the legacy format. Soldier Stompy is the only deck that is separating us from the 5 0. I'm gonna keep this, but if our opponent goes turn one, um, the thing that messes up my fetching, we might be in trouble. That is the thing that I was talking about. Land. They probably should name Vista anyway, because like I'm probably eventually gonna get there. So they should probably just name Vista. Oh cool, okay. Because if I draw another land, I kind of just punish them pretty harshly. Land, please. <sighs> turn one suppression field is the turn one blood moon of today's legacy apparently. Chalice on one. That doesn't do much. Sweet. Yeah, this is what I was this is what I was thinking. Like now we can start fetching. So they should have probably named Prismatic Vista there. Find a blue source here. Gonna fetch for a black source. I'm gonna play a Strix. Wow, not even missing a beat. Not even missing a beat. So I think I'm just gonna play. Uh, I'm just gonna play the Yorion here. It stops my opponent clock. Uh, my opponent's clock entirely, and it puts like a huge four or five into play, and it draws me a card. Alternatively, I could Udo. If I find a fetch line, I think I might be Udo. I may be casting Udo here. It's not a fetch land. And there's a chalice. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be doing that. 
Imagine if Baleful Strix had Flash. I know, right? It would be broken. So now we're winning the race pretty easily. Uh, some pitching about the growth, because we can potentially pitch these two fours, so. Preeminent captain. I think that we should kill this thing. And we have our opponent on a four turn clock. Ancient tomb. So now that we are ahead on board, actually, we don't mind Palace Jailer as much, which is nice. Enlistment Officer. Pressure Field, Place. Venture and Thaliaretic Cathar. Should I kill this thing? You think so? Yeah. Rather not go to this card. Thalia's fine. So we're gonna attack for five in the air. They can't use Ancient Tomb and then Clothis kills them. No matter what. Flying attackers. Is Yurion worth it? People keep asking. The answer consistently seems to be yes. Yep. All right. Good showing. Good showing for this list. Good showing for this list. Um, we should probably make room for like some fatal Porsches and stuff like that. Let me take a quick, quick screenshot over here. 
Yeah. Nothing like showing off on Twitter. Some 5 0 action. Um, very large part of me wants to see me dead in winter and beat them with Udo. The other part of me knows that's bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, all right, the cars that overperformed are Dead of Winter. Leo was pretty insane. Colleger's Command was cast like two or three times, and every single time we cast it was just incredible. Um, Decay, of course, was great. Uh, I do think we do want to have access to some like fatal pushes and whatnot. Some like very cheap uh, removal seems. Yeah, definitely necessary in some matchups. Place of what? Maybe like a Veil of Summer? I mean, there's so many blue mirrors, though. There are so many blue mirrors. Maybe we should play playing the Porsches in the sideboard? Jay seemed not great. So maybe we can make room for one more mobile spell that way. Let's have like a, a, a lonely Jace over there. Oko is of course absurd. Clothes was super good. Every time we resolved Clothes, it just ended up winning the game, which was like two times. Um, even though it was definitely experimental. It's pretty funny how in an 80 card deck, all the one-offs ended up being super, super important. Like Clothis, Leo, Call Against Command. Uh, we actually played against Miracles and we had access to Veil of Summer in game one, which was huge. Do we need six tricks? Uh, it, they were pretty good. They were pretty good throughout the entire league, so I'm pretty sure that it's it's just fine. Like, you, you saw it in that last game, right? Like, the, the Strix was so innocuous, uh, but it was still, like, such a big deal because um, it's possible that my opponent had um, Palace Jailer in him, but they just couldn't cast it because they, they knew about the Dead of Winter because of the Spyglass, and they know that if they... Um, if they actually... Um, Palace Jailer, my dude, then I still have the random 1-1 one, one that flies and it's going to attack through and we're going to steal the Monarch and then we're just going to take over from there very, very easily. Good old 3 hour. It's been 5 hours and 10 minutes at this point. Uh, it, the first league was like almost 3 hours and the second league was 2 hours and a half. So I guess both of them were 2 hours and a half-ish. Pretty cool though. I like this list a lot. Uh, this is definitely my front runner for the weekend. Um, for sure, uh, for sure, like 28 lands has felt magnificent. The very first league that we played with Miracles, the list was playing 27 lands and it felt a little bit iffy. 28 lands with all of these basics felt super great. Uh, big, big fan of, of all the basics in, in my control decks. Um, Preordain over Ponder. I think this might be correct. I'm definitely not sure, but I think that Preordain over Ponder might be correct. Since we don't have that many shuffle effects, we only have 12 fetches. Mm, what else? What else? Uh, so again, Jace was pretty medium. Um, I wonder if that... How, how many blue sources do we have? Uh, blue cards, sorry. I just want to make sure that our force count is... is solid. So all of these are blue cards. 24 in a 80 card deck. I guess that is 31. It's still probably a little bit less than ideal. Still probably a little bit less than ideal. Mm -hmm. 
Did you miss what at all? Not really. Not really. Um, the red was very good though. So that was more of a that that was a little bit more of the like the situation. It's the fact that the red was actually legit super super good with the pyroblasts and the calling against command and the clothes. So I think that I'm winning more by having access to those cards than what I'm losing by having access to source plowshares. Because that's literally the only card that I was playing. I was playing four source plushers in the main deck and uh, three melee mages, or four, I think maybe four melee mages in the sideboard. Those were the only cards that I was really playing. I was playing no white sweepers. Uh, the sweeper that I was running was still Dead of Winter, which has been excellent, by the way. Uh, Dead of Winter uh, definitely felt a lot better in the league that we played right now than Terminus did feel in the previous league. Consider cutting Abundant Growth. Um, well, we didn't really struggle with the mana because we drew Abundant Growth and Astrolase very very regularly, which is what Abundant Growth is meant to do. You're going to see my deck that makes it 32. Badoonk. Yeah, but this, this felt pretty good. This has felt pretty, pretty good. Um, I wonder if we might want something like... I guess something other than Surgical Extraction as our Graveyard Hate. I'm not saying Leyline, obviously. A Leyline's in the 80 card deck. Probably not a great idea. Um, maybe Surgical is like the only, because... I'm trying to think. Because like, we don't want to play Rest in Peace uh, with Udo being such an important part of our strategy. Um, so I guess it just has to be Surgical. There's not... Not much else, really. It just has to be surgical. Soul Guide Lantern is just so bad. It's and also it's it's basically the same thing, it's just sorcery speed, surgical extraction. I think surgical is better than soul guide in the legacy format. Alright. Definitely feels good to, to end the Basically, I played Legacy two times in the past four weeks or something, or five weeks, and I went 4-1, 4-1, 3-2, and 5-0. So it definitely feels great to to be playing, you know, to be playing the format and to just consistently do very well in the format. Uh, cling to Dust is interesting. Cling to Dust is interesting. I definitely have been considering Cling to Dust in my uh, modern Yorion decks, like the, the, the Iceberg... Uh, the Legacy Iceberg versions, and I was definitely considering that in in the modern version. I don't know if I want to be doing that in the Legacy version. Like in Legacy, there's a lot more decks that don't care about the graveyard. And you can cycle, but it's just it's such a bad cycler. And it really fights your Udo. In fact, when I when I finished second in the challenge qualifier in the in the showcase challenge, it was actually with one cling to dust in my main deck, and it did fight my Uro in all zero amount of the time. So I was not too excited about that. But yeah, definitely definitely a good suggestion for sure. Hmm. Yeah. All right, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you're watching the YouTube, hope you enjoyed the legacy content that we had today for, for a change of pace. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.